Information there and like here too. So I think they did a pretty good, good job with the rocks in terms of uh, shapes and everything. You can see the light shaft coming from there. It's just like you know telling you to go here, and we got the, the waterfall here, which I think to remind you that we are in a, a under cave or something where water is there. We got we got this nice uh, platform here, which is also lit, and that suggests that. Maybe there is something on top of it, I don't know. And maybe you can jump from that to that. And you can see how bright this platform here is. Here it is, which is, you know, guides our eyes there. Very strong channels leading, leading us in that direction. And then we got the only red things in the scene is this thing, which suggests, oh, maybe there's something interesting in that. You can see, like, that's the only red things that I can see in this scene. A lot of times we use color that are not in the scene to lead the player to certain locations. What do you usually try to avoid when uh, creating an environment? Things that uh, doesn't improve the overall experience and the player leading of the environments mislead the players. We try not to overwhelm uh, players with information, but we, instead we try to give information step by step. For the covers in, in an environment, we will use always the, the same three, four assets, and we're not gonna use like 10 different type of covers so that the player can quickly read the space and understand where he can take cover now. So it doesn't have to learn that's every it. single thing. So that's another thing that we do. And that's, I think, connects to the fact overwhelming the player with information. Because if you play, if you create the covers with 10 different assets, the player's like, whoa, so many covers. Is that cover? Is that, can I cover that? Well, if you have like three assets and like you take cover to one and you're like, okay, that's a cover. You know that the, a third of the covers in the space are coverable. So the player takes little time to understand what covers are coverable and mm -hmm. what are not. And you were able to see this sort of bending pipe also before you came out from this room. And that's definitely to let the players know where they're going after uh, after the end of the room. Because a lot of times, uh, especially if you have a T-shaped junction, a lot of time in other games, you get to the end of the room and you're like looking left, looking right to understand where you're going and where enemies are and everything. So I think if you place elements, in this case the pipe, the, already telling you where you will go after the end of that room. It really, it's really helpful to improve the smoothness of the gameplay. And I think we got that, and I think I saw this ramp going up, up there, which is, which is also another indicator that we're going on that side. The left side is, br is brighter, so there is a light coming from this direction. So that's another nice way to, to lead the player left without even having them to check what's in the right side. You can see here, on, on this screen here, on this, on this little feet here, these feet are connected to, to this rail, right? And this rail is connected, it has like these lines here that tells warning, be careful not to go there. And then on top of that, you got lights over there. And then we, we can see this element here, which is very squarish, I guess, for from a level design point of view, it is more readable. But as you can see, there is like a skirting here, which helps to blend this thing. And probably, I'm not sure in this case specifically, yeah, maybe I can see it here, there is some sort of like gap there to better connect it with the floor. And you, you can see plenty of these examples. You can see that like the stairs, it's not just a ramp that is clipping through this object, but uh, there is like this thing and then that, and then this, when the, fl when the ramp becomes flat, there is another piece that kind of helps to connect. All those details helps to create uh, a sci-fi environment, that, a better looking than an environment without those details. And you can you can see here as well. Like you got this long tower here, and then you got this skirting here with a different material, which is pretty cool. And then hence that, and then you can see on on the floor there is an extra buffer where that part connects to the floor. Those are really good details to create some nice transition between vertical and horizontal line or in general to create a good transition between structural assets. And you will see that details uh, throughout uh, all the game. Question time. 
do you take uh, a snapshot in a certain position of the map that you are developing and uh, analyze that uh, so you can uh, understand how you could improve your work? Yeah, that's something that we do often and especially in those areas of the game uh, where we can frame the view because we have a, a gate where the player has to go through, either has to like to go prone and go under or something or because there is a cinematic and then uh, when the when the player gets spawned is looking at something and we have those kind of event in the game that we can control the view of the player we try to create everything nicely in terms of composition lighting and everything those mm -hmm. moments is the only are the only moments where we can actually know where the player is going to look at titan has to go through the game every player will see this frame right so try to draw the the, the rule of thirds this thing here which is red it's popping out we got this and we got the weapon here. When you frame things in the rule of third, naturally the eyes try to see those elements first. This weapon thing, in my opinion, it's a bit in your face, but I guess it's really useful from a level design point of view because they wanted the player to see the weapons here. The end of this, of this platform has these darker uh, stripes here, which is, and also this yellow like warning thing that continues all across uh, the platform and that's because probably this material here against this material here the light wasn't there it could have looked pretty much the same so thanks to those lines not only adds details to the seed but also separates the thing and lets you understand that there is a gap or something the pipes here is the only man-made things or like so you can see already the contrast between the materials uh, and uh, you, know, you see how organic the rocks are compared on how hard to face the the pipes is here you got the logo of the company industries that is making these things here and then you got mm -hmm. a label here you got some you got something here you got some serial number there you got other information here you got something here something there something there but everywhere you look there is always like big numbers or like some uh, serial numbers some id something and that's just to make uh, the sci-fi space more grounded to reality. We don't live in this world where there's a lot of titans and a lot of robotic things. So in order to make it more, to make it closer to our world, we try to add them more branding to make it like, ah, oh, yeah, I can see how this crate is kind of similar to a normal container, right? Because it has all the elements that a normal container has. So you can see that crate is basically a container of the future. And that's crazy that the branding helps to create that connection. The, the way that the, these are placed, they're all kind of leading down. It's like this angle lead, lead, leading down, and you got you know, this leading down, you got the shape of this building, this red building, this, you got prospect, perspective line, and they're all kind of leading in this space. And the fact that there is a platform there, which is also red, it makes me think that the, the dev teams are getting you a chance to assess the situation and understand where you have to go before shit comes down. So you can see there's a door here, there is another door here with other other guys and a platform there, probably a ladder there, so you can get up there, you can go up there, there's another window there which suggests, oh, there is an environment inside there. There's a door there, so you can go inside, this is all open. In this case as well, that's another of those uh, like gate plays where we kind of know what you will be doing because uh, if you see here you're gonna have to walk on this wall in order to get to these platforms and we know that you're gonna do that right so that's why we can place this in a way that is interesting for the eye that's where you have to go this opening here which is pretty interesting has like a very interesting contrast mm -hmm. is like right there so this, this to me is go there kind of thing. And the light is also helping a lot to guide the players inside that. You see, you got this like volumetric warm light in this cold environment that really tells you that's where you're going.